Yara Shahidi, I am so happy to be here in sunny LA asking you 73 questions. I'm happy to have you come on in. Okay, let's start things off with a quick check-in. Yeah. How are you feeling today? I'm pretty good. And other than this interview, what was the best part of your day so far? Uh, my morning cup of tea, because I have it every morning, cup of Zedath. Nice, and to be honest, how many times did you hit the snooze button this morning? Only two times, which is like an all-time minimum for me. Very good job. Who was the first person you spoke to? My brother. I accidentally woke him up this morning. Oh, no. Do you bookend your day with news still, or has that changed recently? I had to change it, because I was getting nightmares. It's pretty understandable. Uh, what are some other rituals included in your day-to-day? Uh, yeah. Okay, so rituals start the day, of course, with tea. I love listening to podcasts. I try and write every night. And then, uh, as you can see, this is my handy-dandy record collection. There you go. And I love listening to music. I literally listen to music every moment of the day. Good. Well, this music has some good vibes. This is just something chill. It's a compilation record. Would you say that you're more into the lyrics or the music? I'm so into both, because first I just love the way it feels and the way it sounds, and then I am a lyric analyzer. Can you describe your music taste in one word? All over the place? Hyphenated one word? You and I have something in common there. So do you or do you not have a tattoo inspired by Frank Ocean? (laughs) Okay, so I have tattoos because of Frank Ocean, but they're all inspired by different things. It's just in Chanel, he says, hide my tattoos in Shibuya. I heard that, I was 16, hadn't had tattoos yet. And so when I got tattoos, I was like, when I go to Shibuya now, I have something to hide. Well, I hope you can get there soon. And you said he's inspired your work, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how? In so many ways, his artistry and his work ethic, but also I'd have to say his music is so rife with like cultural references, whether it be Carrie James Marshall or somebody else, that it's oftentimes like an entry point to learn about other artists. Okay, so you love music, and I can see that you love books. Yes. 2020 is definitely the year of reading books. Uh, How would you describe your reading regimen? Uh, I probably read like four for work and school a month, and then one for pleasure, so like five. And I love to annotate my books, so I'm always rereading them. Would you say that any of these books are your favorite? Uh, This is actually a book inspired by my favorite book. A book inspired by a book. So what is this book? This is The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. It's a photo book. It's completely beautiful. So you've been in the biz since you were six weeks old? Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Um, I started in printing commercials with my Bubba, who's a VP, my mother, who's a commercial actress, and my brothers. And it was really just like a fun family affair. It didn't take me out of school or any of my other passions. And I still love commercials to this day. And then you started Blackish at age 14. Mm -hmm. Did you find it hard growing up in the public eye? It's definitely different, but if there is any set to grow up on, I'd have to say it's the Blackish set. Everyone from our crew to our cast is so supportive, and even with some of the hate that we got for covering topics like police brutality or politics, uh, we all have each other's back. Any hints on what Zoe and her friends are going to be getting into in the next season of Grownish? Okay, I've already <laughs> said I'm not the weakest link. I cannot be the weakest link. So all we know is that Zoe has dropped out of school. All right, I'll let you off the hook on that one. So what's been your proudest career moment or achievement? This is so random, but top of mind, I'd have to say, I was in Cincinnati and this girl got out of her car to tell me that she took AP World History because of me. And as a nerd, that is like the highest level of compliment one can receive. There you go. See, you're having an impact on people's lives. Now, in a few months, you have something big to celebrate. You are going to be 21 in February. How are you going to mark the occasion? At home with my family. I'm such a homebody. What would you say is the hardest part of adulting for you? That it's all the time. It is all the time. What's the most fun part? Uh, continuing to honor my desires and passions. What is one thing that still remains on your bucket list? To start a think tank. And I think that you are a black belt in karate. Did I read that? I am. Okay. What was the hardest skill to master in karate? And can you please show me? It just really takes a level of discipline. There's not too many moves I can do in this uh, shirt, but I'd have to say like we had to learn Korean for every move that we learned. But I think the one thing that I've taken away with it that's helped in like every life skill is just balance. Mm. Cause from a balanced center, you can do anything. You definitely make that look easy. Uh, what is your take on the use of the gender specific term actor or actress? Uh, I think it's definitely based on one's preference, but as we continue to expand our vocabulary to reflect 
everyone's just different gender presentations, I think we'll have to expand those words too. And I always love a good, like, gender neutral thespian. Feels very official. Thespian, it does. <laughs> and you, you once chose to opt out of a magazine photo shoot mm -hmm. when you discovered that there was a lack of diversity mm -hmm. in the cast. Um, how did it feel in that moment, standing your ground like that? It was totally uncomfortable and totally important. Uh, moments like that actually happen way more often than you'd expect in this industry. And it was an important kind of lesson to move through at that age of uh, making sure that my voice and my values are front and center in everything that I do. Mm, agreed, that's important. And how did you find the courage within yourself to, to do that? From my awesome support network of family, because they're the like best hype men I know. And... You know, and I'm learning to become more confident myself, so mm. I have when so many lemons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. When fear sets in, mm -hmm. what pushes you to continue advocating for yourself and for others? Uh, really, it's because, you know, I try and come from a place of being thoughtful. And so when I think that what I am caring about isn't that important, I try and remind myself, like, that it is from a place of thoughtfulness. And so there is a reason to pay attention to what I'm thinking about and to advocate. Yeah. So for your next film, you're headed to Neverland as yeah. Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. Were you a fan of Peter Pan growing up? Uh, I was because the TV was actually off Monday through Friday in our household. Mm. And everything I watched was usually based on folklore of some kind from around the world. So Peter Pan was one of the things that I watched all the time. Oh, I watched it all the time too. Now Tinkerbell flies. So does this mean that they're going to strap a harness on you and hoist you up in the air and make you fly too? I actually don't know yet, but I'm <laughs> excited by the prospect of flying. You gonna want to go outside? Let's go outside. Let me help you with that. Thank you. There you go. Get Good that off your hands. Perfect. Okay, got the cups. Let's go. We've been sanitized. That's important. Now, moving on. Mm-hmm. Are there any hidden talents that I might not know of? I can fall asleep anywhere. anywhere. Tornado, concert, anywhere. Those are real instances, by the way. All right, well, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. And that looks like cornhole. <laughs> it is. Are you any good at it? Well, why don't you come find out? Oh, that's a challenge. That's a <laughs> challenge accepted. Texting or calling? I would say text. I will watch a phone ring. Would you rather talk to animals or speak every language? Uh, talk to animals. I'm too nosy to speak every language. Puzzles or board games? <laughs> board games. Online or in-person shopping? Online. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? No, I am lactose intolerant and allergic to pineapple. Ah, don't do that. Now, if I offer you immortality, would you take it? No, not at all. Are ghosts real? Yes. Brief intermission while I put down this pitcher Kay. of iced tea. Yara, do you have a nickname? Too many to count, actually. Would you say that you're good at keeping secrets? I am, but you would not know that. Yara, are you ready for a game of cornhole? I am. Okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions as we go. You want to go first? Yeah, let me see what I got. Okay, here we go. I'm kind of nervous. Go for it. Drum roll. And... Whoa! Oh, you, you got it in! <laughs> yes! Is that the first time you've gotten in on the first try? Uh, I've, I've gotten it before, but it, it's few and far between, quite honestly. All right, I'm going to give it okay. a shot. Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh. Oh! You're so close! So close! Yara, a life lesson you learned from your parents at a young age was abundance must flow. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Ooh. <laughs> I got the hole in one. That's what's yes. important. That's uh, it really came from when my brother and I started earning money mm -hmm. from working at a young age. They uh. sat us down. Okay, so close. That basically together counts as a hole in one. If you say uh -huh. so. <laughs> and they had three jars, one for saving, one for spending. But the most important one was for donating. Because yeah. their basic premise that we live by is that in order to receive, you must constantly be giving. That's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And your dad was Prince's photographer. Yeah. When was the moment growing up that you realized the significance of that? When we moved to L.A. You know, I've always felt his impact personally, but to mm. see how many people around the nation, around the globe, uh, were inspired by him is surreal. Mm. And is it true that he rented an entire movie theater so that people could come see your first movie? Imagine that. True. I mm. cannot believe it to this day. How did that make you feel? Just really supported. And your mom is also your business partner right now. Yes. <laughs> How do you balance your mother-daughter relationship? Oh, it's so easy because we're legit the same person. So the perfect person to be in business with because we hold each other to our values and what's important and our goals. And we always take being mother and daughter first. That's so cool. Now, who do you think you inherited your work ethic from? Both of my parents are very focused. So both of them. And you're a family of pranksters, I hear? 
<laughs> I am. We are. And your mom once hid under your bed and grabbed your ankles. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get her back for it? I'm sure I have. I just don't remember. But the most recent one is that we got my brother. We did a haunted house this Halloween. Oh, that's so much fun. Now, what's the rest of your day looking like? Uh, I just have a couple Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones where you like only get dressed from here up. <laughs> <laughs> AKA every Zoom meeting ever. Yes. Now, the clothes we wear say a lot about our identity. Mm -hmm. What do you want your fashion choices to say about you? My fashion helps me take up space. I'm a young person always in new environments. Mm -hmm. And so I use wearing loud clothes to just feel more present, quite honestly. How would you describe your style evolution? Can you take me on a tour of your phases? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it started with only high top sneakers and skirts when I was little. And then I switched to super preppy. Um, I would only wear, let me think, plaid skirts and long uh, knee socks and Oxfords. And now I wear loud prints like this or blazers or really a monochrome tracksuit. Nothing in between though. That looks cool. And is there a favorite item in your closet or are any of them here? I actually pulled one of them out. Um, these are a pair of jeans, just a regular pair of jeans that we customize with a little yellow, my favorite color. And most importantly, Look it says vote on the bottom. Fully support that. <laughs> now, who or what is most influential when it comes to your personal style? Oh, my mother and my middle brother, Saeed. We all wear the same clothes, so we go through fashion phases together. Do you have any fashion regrets? None. Lucky you. And what's a staple you think everyone should have in their closet? A white tank top, preferably taken from your brother's room. Ooh, a stolen <laughs> staple. Yeah. Do you have a favorite outfit of Zoe's in blackish or grownish? That's so hard. Michelle Cole kills it. But I'd have to say most recently our homage to Aaliyah in Zoe's 21st birthday party. One of my favorites. Hmm. Now, do you want something to drink? We have that iced tea. I've been waiting for you to ask. <laughs> okay, come All on. All right. So how would you define beauty? I try and undefine it, which may sound super broad, but that's the point, because everything is to be beautiful. All right, now taking it back to the sun is also a star. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in love at first sight? I do, because that's how my parents met. They locked eyes. And what about fate? Yeah, a nice little mix of fate and free will. Profound. Here. Cheers to that. Yes, cheers. There you go. Now, Yara, what's your take on the multiverse and alternate realities? Do you think that we get to live multiple lives? I do. Um, oh. I do. <laughs> so, so would that mean that there could be endless versions of you? There could be, and I'm so glad we're on different planets because one Yara is enough. How would you describe the alternate version of you in another universe? Uh, a professional jet ski rider, which is like the first thing I wanted to be when I was little. I was not expecting that answer. And what's your biggest fear? Biggest fear, heights. And what do you do to get out of a funk? Listen to music. Yeah. And what would you say is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, booths. I hate restaurant booths. That is so specific. What do you want to be remembered for? I try and think of impact over legacy, so I don't quite know. Mm. That's fair. All right, Yara, a few more questions. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite Sade song? King of Sorrow. And what would you say is your favorite place to be in the entire world or the entire universe? Uh, I'm doing blanket for napping. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite blanket. spot, my go-to spot. You said your hidden town was napping. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. And that's a great transition to the last question. Question number 73 for an insomniac like me. Can you please give me some tips on how to fall asleep properly? Yeah, I have so many tips. Uh, yeah. Sleep meditations. Um, don't be on your phone past 30 minutes. A great pillow, like mm -hmm. you find your pillow, a weighted blanket, mm. tea, great tea, mm -hmm. chamomile. Yep. And other things. And other things. No, you just. <sighs> you just. Yara? Yeah. 